in some ways, the integral of the square root of 1 minus x squared is a little bit intimidating, mostly because it's a polynomial inside a square root, which can get pretty ugly. But you might recognize that there is some circle stuff going on here. In particular, you may recognize the integrand as being the expression for a semicircle of radius 1, that is, half the unit circle. Now, in the case of the indefinite integral, understanding this connection to the circle doesn't help us too much. But it's worth considering how easy this integral would be if we were doing the definite integral from negative 1 to 1. If we were integrating this from negative 1 to 1, well, that would just be the area under that semicircle, since the semicircle has radius 1 and its center is the origin. That's why these bounds from negative 1 to 1 make this so easy. In this case, well, we know how to find the area of a unit circle, and then we would just have to cut it in half. Pi r squared for the unit circle is pi times 1, or just pi, and so for the area of this semicircle, which is the value of this definite integral, we would just have half pi. So pi over 2 would be the value of the integral. But let's return to the indefinite case and see how we can solve this problem problem using a trigonometric substitution. We can actually clean this integral up nicely by letting x equal sine theta, and then dx would equal cosine theta d theta, taking the derivative on both sides. Then we can replace x squared with sine squared theta, since x equals sine theta. Dx, of course, we replace with cosine theta d theta. Now, you may recognize 1 minus sine squared theta under the square root by the Pythagorean identity. That's just cosine squared under the square root. So then this integral is the integral of the square root of cosine squared theta times cosine theta d theta. Of course, the square root of cosine squared is just cosine, so we have one cosine and a second cosine. So we end up with just the integral of cosine squared theta d theta. Then, to integrate cosine squared theta, we have to recall that cosine squared theta equals 1 plus cosine 2 theta over 2. That division by 2 we can take out of the integral, but that still leaves 1 plus cosine 2 theta inside the integral. Now, this is straightforward to integrate. We just have the 1 half out front, and then the integral of 1 is theta, and the integral of cosine 2 theta is 1 half sine 2 theta. Note how if we took the derivative of this second term, the derivative of sine is cosine, we'd have the 2 theta inside, and then the chain rule would give us a factor of 2, which would cancel out with the 1 half, so this integral is correct. Of course, we also have the addition of the arbitrary constant. Then distributing the 1 half, this is equal to theta over 2 plus a fourth sine 2 theta plus c. All that remains then is to rewrite this in terms of x. We know that x equals sine theta, so this theta is just arc sine x. As for sine of 2 theta, we'll be able to do some work with that by using the double angle identity. So solving x equals sine theta for theta, we then have that theta over 2 is 1 half arc sine x. Now sine of 2 theta is the same as 2 sine theta cosine theta. By making that replacement, this 2 times a fourth becomes 1 half. And then, of course, we still have sine theta cosine theta. Now, we know that sine theta is just x, so that's straightforward. As for cosine theta, we have to consider a right triangle. Going back to the substitution we made and thinking about this in terms of a right triangle, if this is theta, then sine theta, opposite over hypotenuse, has to equal x. Hence, the opposite side could be x, and the hypotenuse would have to be 1. Then, by the Pythagorean theorem, that would force the adjacent side to be the square root of 1 minus x squared. Hence, cosine of theta is this adjacent side over the hypotenuse. The adjacent side is just the square root of 1 minus x squared, 
and divided by the hypotenuse doesn't change it. So cosine theta is root 1 minus x squared. Thus, we arrive at the final solution in terms of x, the integral of the square root of 1 minus x squared is equal to 1 half arc sine x plus 1 half x times the square root of 1 minus x squared plus c. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and be sure to check out my Calculus 2 course and Calculus 2 exercises playlists in the description for more. Thanks for watching. Stressed out, sweetie, I'm stressed out. Sounds like you've been stressed out. Tell me what you're stressed about. Love. Stressed out, honey, I've been stressed out lately. Don't know what's what, don't know what I'm stressed about. Stressed out, sweetie, I'm stressed out. Sounds like you've been stressed out. Tell me what you're stressed about.